found. On this episode of Time Blazers, we're going through the gold. Face. That's right, gold. And we're digging and prospecting our way through the past to see just what our fascination is with money. Hey there, Sonny. Got any money? Where it came from, who had it, who hid it, and most of all, the lengths some people have gone to to get their hands on it. Stick him up. We're all fired up and ready to hit the high seas in search of riches on this episode of Time Blazers. I always thought I was a normal kid. I mean, I did normal things, right? But then Sam and Jen appeared. Did you see that? Out of nowhere. Now that was weird. Suddenly, they were appearing all over the place. And now they take me back in time to find out what life in the past was really like. gonna be ruined. And you know why? Where all this started is the software I really wanted to buy at the computer store in the mall. And the fact that my allowance only covers about this much, and I mean that much, before the sale ends on Saturday. So the only way I can get my mom to go half first is if I earn money around the house, which is totally gross. You ask me, it's totally unfair that I never have any money. My brother, he hoards money. Me? It just disappears, and then I have to make it all over again. The world would be much better off if money had never been invented. Where did money come from in the first place? Hey, now that's a great question. Sam? Step right over here, Shakira, because you're today's lucky contestant. Yes, Shakira, you have asked the money question. Wow, <laughs> I've definitely been doing too much cleaning. And it's on the money question that we explain that money itself is only what a society decides it is. Money can be this, or it can be this. Oh, and that's right. That's what you've won, Shakira. A nice, juicy rat. Hey. A dead rat? What are they talking about? Yeah, I thought we made that pretty clear. Yeah, I don't really see how it could be clearer. Maybe we better find another way to explain it. You go first. For a good example of what we're talking about, let's say we had way back in time when things were just a little simpler. Well, sort of. Okay, maybe they weren't so simple, but when it came to cash... For all sorts of civilizations, the idea of money itself wasn't always about paper and coins. Because money means something that you trade or is valuable, you can find it in all sorts of different forms throughout history. For instance... Whoa, what a wild lemonade stand. Trade your beaver pelt for a glass of lemonade. One lemonade coming right up. This form of money really isn't all that far in the past. Take northern Canada, for instance. As recently as the 1800s, goods there could commonly be valued against the furs of beavers, called beaver pelts. The sign here explains it all. Here, take a look. Out here in the 1800s, one beaver pelt will get you a glass of lemonade or two kilograms of sugar or two pairs of scissors. For 12 beaver pelts, you can get an arrow. Hey, that's kind of cool. Buying stuff with beaver pelts? I wonder what that would be like. I mean, think of all the shopping we do and all the things we buy or rent. It would be pretty strange if we use something other than money to get stuff. Out of the 750. No problem. One and two. Two beaver pelts? Sure, why not? Okay. That will be one squirrel pelt and one gopher skin. You gotta wonder why we ever got rid of this kind of money. Because there are certain problems with using animals for money. First of all, animals are big. They're difficult to feed, they're smelly, and they're messy. Most societies decided they had to come up with something better. 
Fortunately, something better came along. And it was... Whoa. Where in the world? Hey, look what I found. There's tons of rocks like this all over the cave back there. Gee, it, it sure is pretty, but it's probably not worth much, though. No? But just so you have something to do, why don't you go get as much of it as you can and bring it back here? Okay. Of course, gold turned out to be the major element in the story of money. Now, we all know about gold. We all learned about it when we first heard the story of Jack and the Beanstalk, or the goose that laid the golden egg. From the ancient world to today, gold has been the thing that everyone's after. But did you ever wonder why? Oh, come on. That's easy. As far as elements go, gold has to be one of the most malleable, meaning you can change it into all sorts of shapes. Now, you can forge it, you can emboss it, you can engrave it, you can cast it, you can even sew with gold. Yes, sir, Bob, gold is... Well, it's gold. Now, the best part is, you can even stick it in your pockets. There we go. Now, let's see you do that with a coward chicken. Oh, yeah. Now, gold, it's just so nice looking. No wonder we humans have become so obsessed with gold. Hey, gold. How are you doing, gold? Obsessed is right. In fact, gold had obsessed us so much that in the early 1500s, the legend of a city of gold gripped the imagination of many a new explorer, a number of whom set out not to find the new world necessarily, but the fabled El Dorado. El Dorado was a mythical land of riches. It was called the City of Gold because it was supposedly made entirely from gold. Located in the New World, meaning South America, this city was sought by explorers like Pizarro and the legendary Sir Walter Raleigh. Of course, none of them found it because it didn't exist. But that brings up something else. A major attraction of gold that can't be downplayed? It was stealable. Check it out. A few more finds like this and I won't have to work today at all. Wait a minute. Something we haven't talked about is where actual money came from. I mean, gold is one thing, but we don't use gold today. For that kind of money, we have to reposition our sextant and head due east. Our destination, China. People figured the Chinese were the first to have come up with the idea of money, somewhere around 2200 years BC. Of course, the coins were a little different looking than what we use today. In fact, they weren't really coins at all. They were cowrie shells rare and therefore very valuable. Now the Chinese used these for almost a thousand years. Then in 1200 BC, they created an imitation made of bronze. Now this can pretty much be counted as the invention of coins as currency. Now the only problem with these little babies is that they weren't worth very much. So when you wanted to buy something big, like say a water buffalo, then you really had your hands full. One water buffalo might literally be worth its weight in calories. Kind of hard to shop around with all that in your pocket, and really hard to stuff into a piggy bank, I know. Fortunately, the Chinese came up with another solution. It started with paper, which they invented in 100 AD. A mere 700 years after that came paper money. And the name for this first banknote? Cash. Pretty cool, don't you think? The funny thing is, when Marco Polo came back from his first tour of the Far East, the British couldn't believe his stories of the Chinese actually using paper for money. But as with most things, the rest of the world eventually caught on. Well, sort of. See, the problem most countries had with paper money was that you could copy it and create counterfeit. Maybe that's why in the 1400s the Chinese changed their minds and stopped using paper money altogether. And why the British couldn't seem to make up their minds whether to use it or not. And the Greeks, they're not sure either. Oh, that's so sweet. 
With no one being able to make up their minds, some countries liked paper money, some didn't. You can kind of understand why certain folks still preferred, you guessed it, gold. 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 gold! And if we're talking about gold, we have to check out Oak Island. I don't know, Jen. I think this is just a deserted island in the middle of nowhere. Actually, Oak Island is a deserted island. It's off the coast of Nova Scotia. Then why are we even... Because this is an important part of the money story. What part? The part where we talk about the lengths people went to to get their hands on it. Let's go back a bit. While the early explorers discovered that the New World wasn't El Dorado, that didn't mean they didn't find any gold. They did. They stole it from the natives. But either way, the gold they did find, they shipped back to the Old World. And that led to a whole new problem. Think of it. It's 1590, and you're on a boat at sea. Your job? Pick up some gold in Mexico and take it back to the King of Spain. Sounds simple, right? So everything's going along, Ducky, till you notice a strange ship on the horizon. That's a strange ship on the horizon? Who do you figure it is? Uh-oh. Jen, something tells me you should get out of there fast. Uh-oh! That's right. With all that money going back and forth, it meant the creation of something other than a new trade route. It meant the creation of the pirate. And believe me, when pirates are around, you're in a lot of trouble. Wow, this whole pirate thing doesn't sound good at all. Wow, I had no idea money had been around for so long. But it did look kind of different back in the past. Of course, my problem is that I need modern cash if I'm going to buy the new software I want. Believe me, this isn't my idea. It's kind of neat seeing how we went from beaver pokes cash. to paper money. But once paper money showed up, some people like Sam figured it was easier to copy it than to earn it. Or steal it like pirates. And that's where we left off, with Captain Jen on her ship at sea. Doesn't look good. Trust me, this is just about the worst place you can imagine being in 1590. Transporting large amounts of gold from the old world to the new, out on the high seas, and then uninvited guests. Of course, it's always possible that these guys aren't pirates, but... I'm willing to go out on a limb and say that they are. I guess I'm going to have to fight it out. Fortunately... I'm an expert sword fighting captain. Come on, you coward! I'm waiting for you. Okay, my sword fighting skills might be a little rusty, but this is how pirates worked. Their thing was to overwhelm you with strength, board your ship, tie up your crew, and then get down to some serious looting and plundering. Ah, oh, oh, most hospitable of you. <laughs> Just you wait. Soon it'll be the Enlightenment, and then we'll see. And that brings us to this important point. Did you ever wonder what happened to all the money the pirates stole? Sure, a lot of it they drank, and a lot of it they spent. But the rest of it? Well, that's where Captain Kidd enters the picture. Captain Kidd was once a privateer. That means a sort of policeman who went out on the high seas to stop pirates. But then Captain Kidd saw how good it was with the pirates. So he switched sides and became a pirate. And he was successful. Very successful. And that's where Oak Island comes into play. Many years after Captain Kidd's death, in 1795, a couple of young explorers landed on Oak Island and discovered that while the island at first seemed to have never been explored, some weird clues suggested otherwise. A tree branch, carefully sawed off? Hmm. That led to the discovery of a sort of dip in the ground, then the discovery of a floor of carefully laid stones below the dip. Our explorers had a theory, eventually backed up by a surprising amount of evidence, that this was where Captain Kidd buried his famous treasure for safekeeping. So folks began digging, and digging, and digging, and digging, and digging, and digging, and digging. And do you know what they discovered? Nothing. Not a thing. Nada. The big zilch. 
For hundreds of years, people have dug and searched Oak Island top to bottom, and they always come up empty-handed. But that doesn't stop some folks, though. Some folks are so crazy they even... Hang on. Sam, you're not gonna find anything. I know, it's just uh, gold. Sam! Hey, don't blame him. You know, if you know there was once money somewhere, you're bound to keep on going back, right? Uh-huh. You've got that right, Shakira. And coming back for more is exactly what happened in California in 1849. The Wild West. You see, that's when gold was discovered. And something called gold fever started making headlines all over the world. And I mean, all over the world. The news of the discovery of gold in the West spread like wildfire. There were all sorts of stories about people becoming millionaires overnight. Supposedly, gold could just be pulled right out of the rock. And folks said there was no limit to how much was there. With news like that, no wonder over 50,000 prospectors came to the West in search of easy riches. Oh, come on. <sighs> Problem is, getting those riches wasn't quite as easy as they thought. When I say not easy, I mean not easy. First, there was the problem with the rocks. You know, digging gold out of rocks is no walk in the park. In fact, it's backbreaking. It wasn't like the gold just jumped out of the ground at you. You had to look for it in tiny little itty bitty pieces. Not easy. You can just imagine how bad those prospectors felt. I mean, here you're thinking you're gonna hack big hunks of gold out of the rock, and instead, you're panning in the river for little bits of gold dust. However, it wasn't all bad. All those prospectors heading west did manage to create a fortune. Well, golly, look at this. I've never seen a town like this before. Come on, Bessie, come on. Looks like there's some sort of hotel. It's okay, Bessie. I won't be long. I'll tie you up right here for a bit. Hey there, Sonny. Got any money? Uh, well, well, yeah. I just got this gold dust I got out of the river. I've been working for about six months, and it's almost $20 worth. Six months? I bet you need a place to stay. Well, well, yeah. Well, great. That'll be two dollars. Now, you're gonna need some laundry as well, right? Well, yeah, I guess. Well, that's another dollar, and... Oh, let's see. You're gonna need some new clothing. Those in particular are quite ragged. Now, and that's another four dollars, and let's see. What am I forgetting? Oh, you must be starving. Why don't you head on in and get the 50-cent breakfast? Payable in advance, of course. Now, that's another dollar. Plus dinner, that's another two, and... That sounds about right. Now, head on in. Bruh. Scoot! You get the picture. It was the folks that ran the local towns, the saloons and the hotels. They made the real fortunes. And it was out of these towns that the Wild West grew. And with that kind of growth came, you guessed it, more money. There's got to be more money in this house. More money is right. And one of the ways that money was moved from east to west to back again was through this newfangled contraption, the train. The only problem is, <gasps> What's that up on the tracks? Ahead! Now the problem is, I'm not being particularly smart here. See, I stopped the train, I've gotten off, and now I'm starting to realize that... don't come from this part of the country. 
There's obviously something seriously wrong with this picture. You got that right. Stick them up. Train robberies were a big problem in the Wild West. Once again, folks going to any length to get their hands on money. Fortunately, by 1900, the law had become pretty good at getting rid of bandits like this. Law? <laughs> what law? <laughs> You're forgetting one of the oldest rules about money, Varmint. If it's valuable enough that someone wants to steal it, then it's valuable enough that someone's going to want to get it back. Oh, rats! The sheriff! Oh. <gasps> I, I better go. I'll see you later. Do you see what I mean? He didn't even get the money. And most of the time, they didn't get the money. But that didn't stop them from trying. Help! Bad boy village is robbed the bank! And that's what made the Wild West so wild. A lot of money and a little law. Ricky's getting away in the stagecoach. It's been the biggest problem for law enforcement throughout the ages. Folks always trying to get their hands on more money. But there is no more money. I've looked everywhere. Uh-oh. Well, at least I've got 25, 30, 37, 76, 76 cents? All that for 76 cents? What have I done? Don't worry, Shakira. You've just learned a valuable lesson and maybe the real story of money throughout history. Since the beginning of time, we've been obsessed with money and gaining it by honest or dishonest means. But we never seem to figure out that gaining it dishonestly is often a lot harder than gaining it honestly. Yeah, I guess I just figured that out. Sam, they've already proved that there's nothing down here. Yeah, yeah. But you're still digging. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's but right. If there was anything down here, they would have found it a long time ago. Oh, I, I know that. You know, it's uh, the digging, really. It's therapeutic. It's my new favorite thing. Just digging. Yeah, that's... Oh, oh, hold on. What the... <laughs> Yeah. Sam, you're wasting your time. Hey, there's no such thing as wasting time. This is like exercise, really. It's like down and over and across. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What you do, I do my yeah, if anyone ever accused me of being afraid of money, they're dead wrong. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, this stuff's sweet. Ooh, check that out. You know what would go really good right now with a handful of money? To bathe in it. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Eat it up, people. Hey, Gold. How you doing, Gold? You're so pretty, Gold. Hello. I'm looking for Gold. Now, there's only one thing wrong with this picture. Me shoveling constantly. Seriously. What's up with that, Jen? Look at my face. To order a DVD or video of this program, call 1-800-876-2447 or visit our website at www.chiptaylor.com.